You're tuned in to Track Talk on Sports Radio 810 WHB. America's largest all-sports radio station presents the number one motorsport show in the Midwest for over a decade. Track Talk, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Here are the racing boys, Scott Trailer and Kirk Elliott. Welcome to Track Talk on Sports Radio 810 WHB. It's the Racing Boys for the next two hours. Hour number one here on Sports Radio 810 WHB. And hour number two exclusively on RacingBoys.com. We're going to open up the phones today, folks. We want to talk a little bit about NASCAR, and we're going to talk about some local racing, but uh, don't have a lot of guests scheduled today. So it's up to you to make the show interesting today. 913-3810-810. 913-3810-810. We want to hear from you. Not college football for a couple hours. And uh, in about an listen to some college football. Uh, college game day will be coming up with Danny and Stan. But for now, it is motorsports. And, again, Track Talk is brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Check them out at kccars.com. That's their new address, folks, kccars.com. Check them out right now while you're listening to us online, if so. And uh, look at all the great deals they have over there at McCarthy Chevrolet in o- and, again, we want to thank them so much for being a great sponsor of the Racing Boys. Kirk, it was an interesting week last weekend at Richmond. It looked like Denny Hamlin was on his way to winning Richmond and uh, picking up his fifth win of the season, has four. But it looked like he was on his way to five. Uh, but, unfortunately for him, he was, well, he had to get into uh, uh, gas-saving mode towards the end of that race. And Clint Boyer did as well, and Clint Boyer comes out on top with the win, Kirk. And a uh, pretty big deal for Clint Boyer to get that second win. Uh, what What did you think of last week's race? First of all, well, I it was it was a very good race. It was uh, eventful and entertaining, as it always is at Richmond. And I think you and I both agree that's one of our favorite race tracks. We've been there before. And just the way it's configured, much like uh, Iowa yeah. Speedway, for those of you heading mm-hmm. up to the truck race tonight, uh, it's uh, uh, sort of like that. Uh, a little shorter. Yeah. Uh, well, actually. Uh, Three quarters Iowa's, of a mile versus seven eighths. Yeah, Iowa's a little bigger track. Yeah, it is. So. Uh, That's what I meant. That's what I meant. That but it, Richmond it, was a little shorter. It is conducive to side by side racing, and we got uh, quite a bit of that last week. And uh, hey, what can you say about Clint Boyer? He thanked Juan Pablo Montoya in Victory Circle for helping him win that race. And he had a smile on his face, and and, uh, he was in a position where he didn't have to worry about fuel so much at the end. A little bit. He ran out, couldn't get the car to Victory Lane when it was all over, but he had enough to uh, make it to the end. Uh, But uh, he very easily could have fell down a lap when... He uh, made contact with uh, Juan Pablo Montoya out on the racetrack, and uh, you think that uh, that it was well, uh, it, it was no accident that he was able to stay on the lead lap. We'll just put it. It that wasn't. Way. It was obvious, and uh, I don't know if anybody is really taking a look at the video. And I'm going to watch the chat room, see what people think as we talk about this. Again, you can get on the RacingBoys.com chat room by just going to our homepage. At the top of the page, click on. Um, chat room and hang out with everybody that's listening to the show that kind of hangs out there. Um, I think for sh- the, without a doubt, and I'm going to ask Clint, I don't expect him to say anything on the record, but off the record I expect him to say that he spun himself out when he had that left rear flat. Um, if you look at the way that he went through corners three and four after he had that flat, um, and the one thing that I'm not clear on is how – I think he went one additional lap after he got into Juan Pablo Montoya. We, do, we don't know around. that because it was during a commercial break when that accident happened and when they came back. But uh, but we do know that it right. – Kurt, but what we do know is that it wasn't at the moment that they made contact. No. We know that much. So we know that he had to at least make a lap. He, ca- he comes back down the back straightaway. He's obviously got a left rear flat. He goes through turns three and four. As he comes up off of the corner, notice the way Clint Boyer exits the corner off of turn four, down low. And if you listen to his in-car audio at the time, as he comes up off of the corner, 
He's obviously rolling up on the gas, and you can tell that he knows that there's something wrong with the car. And at, at the moment that he gets up towards the straightaway where he clears the inside pit wall, what's he do? He stands on the gas, spins his car out down towards the grass. Now, Kirk, when I first talked to you about this, you, you were kind of, well, I don't know about that. But after watching that video and really analyzing it, I, and I think anybody else would come to the conclusion that that was uh, his strategy was to spin the car out so he doesn't go down two laps. If he At this point, he's got a car that's capable of winning just on speed, not on fuel mileage. He's got one of the fastest cars there. He knows if he comes around and goes down pit road, that he's going to have to go down at least a lap, probably two, before he gets back out on the track because it would be under green flag laps. Clint Boyer is smart enough to know he, he can't have that. He's got too good of a car. And he has enough talent and enough skill and car control to be able to spin his car out as he comes off of turn four. And without a doubt in my mind, that's exactly what he did. Now, just think about it. You go back. You go back and you think about Dale Jr. did that at Bristol one time, and he admitted that he spun himself out to draw a yellow. And NASCAR, I can't remember what the fine was. I can't remember what the outcome was. But I know NASCAR wasn't happy about it. And so if you're going to do it, you can't tell everybody that you did it. But my gut tells me, and from what I've witnessed on television, Clint Boyer spun himself out, coming off a of turn four, so he wouldn't go down a lap. Do you concur? Uh, yes, after viewing the video, uh, after you brought that scenario up to me. Again, when I first saw it live, they were coming out of a commercial break, and it had already happened, and Boyer had already spun his car out, and what we saw coming out of the commercial break was Boyer on pit road. And they said, Boyer's got a problem here. Then they went through the replays. You saw this for the first time as part of a highlight package because you were at covering races last week. You saw him spin the car out at very, not that long before you saw the highlight of him spinning it out for the burnout when the race was over and it was pretty similar. Well, and, yeah, and I, have that, to, I have to admit, when, when you said that he gassed the throttle coming off the fourth turn, much like you would do when you win the race and you're going down to do the burnouts, well, it, it was pretty similar to that. I don't think there's any doubt about it that he did that. On it's purpose. glaring. Yeah. It's glaring. In fact, if you watch him come down for his victory lane or his victory burnout down the front straightaway, he comes off of turn four, he stands on it, he spins it from up by the wall all the way down into the grass. And if you didn't know better, if you really weren't paying attention, you might have thought they were replaying his spin out during the race. I mean, it's that similar to the 2R. So I don't know what people think about that. I don't think it matters. In fact, if anything, I think that's just showing that Clint Boyer is a seasoned veteran and understands what he's got to do to win these races. I don't look at it as cheating. I don't look at it as anything but taking care of yourself. And I would bet money that this happens more often than what you would think. But just nobody ever talks about it. Somebody spins around or their car acts like it's going to die and they can't get it back to pit road, whatever. But there's people that manipulate the system so they can get a yellow flag. And Clint Boyer, I believe, did that. And it paid off. Now, the one thing I think you brought up, Kirk, that stands out to me is is that he did a diversion kind of when he got out of the car. He, he, Juan Pablo Montoya, you know, uh, he blamed it all on him. But the fact is Juan cut down the tire, but I believe Clint Boyer spun himself out to draw out the yellow. Yeah, and he was smiling when he said that. Of course, you're always smiling when you're the winner and you're in victory circle. So that, well, sure. that's, that's yeah. nothing unusual right. there. But uh, I I agree with you that it is a brilliant move. Isn't that what racing's all about? Racers get away with what they th can think they can get away with. And if they do, good for them. That's what, that's what racing is. And I think it's a brilliant move. And will he ever admit it to anyone? I'm not sure they even discussed it. He just did that on his own. I I wouldn't be surprised that if he didn't say to anybody what he right. was doing, it was probably not even discussed within their own team, the spotter or anybody. And would he well, ever admit that to you if you go up and ask him about it sometime? I say he will but never admit it to you or I think, anyone. Well, I, I'm not sure that you couldn't get him admitted, you know, off the record. 
And there's no way that they could have that kind of radio communication saying, all right, this is what I'm going to do, because that would get you busted. Right. So, yeah, Clint, Clint had to take it upon himself to do it. And he did it perfect. I mean, he absolutely nailed it. I mean, he was down low, down by the line. And here's the thing that really stands out. He just passed Pitt, Pitt Road. He just passed it. So he And he knew he had a flat because you could tell by the way he was wiggling the car around. that he, It was all the way down on the rim. The liner was down as well. It was all the way down. There was no mistake. Those drivers can feel it when a tire is down two or three pounds, let alone down on the rim. So when he drove past Pitt Road, the entrance to Pitt Road, as he went through corners three and four, he had to know that he had that flat, but he chose to stay out. And that is the deciding factor that made me think that he spun that car out on on his own uh, coming off a of turn four. Because he just passed Pitt Road, and it was obvious he had a flat. He wasn't going to try to go out there and limp that thing around until a caution came out or somebody might have had a problem. He had to come in, and if he didn't come in right then and there, he was going to have to come in on the very next lap. He couldn't stay out there. So let's, you know what, let's do this. Let's spin out, stay on the lead lap, and take our chances and see if we can work our way back up through the field. Now, the one thing that was crazy about the end of that race, Kirk, did it seem like it was forever? Those guys went on and on and on. When I say those guys, Clint Boyer, Denny Hamlin, they were getting passed by everybody because they put everybody about a lap or two laps down by staying out on the track instead of coming in, and they were doing the fuel mileage game. But didn't it seem like forever that they were out there, and wouldn't you have thought that, man, couldn't shouldn't these guys be a little closer to him than that far down? I, I was amazed on how long they were able to run at like half speed, three quarter speed to save fuel. Yeah, and I don't think anybody, even the announcers on TV, thought that Boyer had enough fuel to make it to the end. I mean, they were all saying there's just no way he's going to be able to well, make it. But he did. I think, I, 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 I think Denny Hamlin thought the same thing. Right. I think Denny Hamlin was making a run towards Clint Boyer. Looked like he was going to work his way up there to Clint. He was about a second faster than Clint. He worked up. He got within five seconds of Clint Boyer, and it was like they told him, Darren Grubb told him in the pits, Denny, we don't have enough fuel. Boyer's going to run out. Just ride because Boyer's not going to make it to the end, and I think we can. And it seemed like that that was Darian Grubb and Denny Hamlin's approach. Let's wait for him to run out of gas. We're going to win this thing after leading what? I think they led over 200 laps. Well, Denny they, Hamlin domi- they were dominating the race. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, so, but don't you think that that's what Darian Grubb had told him? Sure. He, there's no way he's going to make it. Just save gas. We'll make it to the end, but there's no way that Clint's going to make it to the end. You've got plenty there, and I think they were just as shocked as anybody, Darian Grubb and Denny Hamlin, the driver, that Boyer was able to make it to the finish. And uh, Well, and again, I'm surprised he didn't, that he didn't Denny make, Hamlin made it. Yeah. Well, they, they, they slowed up just enough. They knew how much they had to conserve to, to get it to the end. But they still thought that that, I agree with you, they thought that that was still going to be enough to, to get the win. Yeah. It was very, very interesting the way that whole thing played out. And there is no question in my mind or yours that had Boyer not spun out, brought out that yellow, there's no way he had a chance to win that race. He would have finished 15th, 16th. I think the, the and I don't have it in front of me. But it seems like there was somewhere around 15, 16 cars on the lead lap. And he wouldn't have been one of them. He would have been at least one lap down. And, of, and of course, nobody is bringing up the scenario you pointed out at the time because everything is overshadowed by who gets in the chase. Jeff Gordon was getting more notoriety than Clint Boyer. Boyer was almost an afterthought in victory circle when the race. So nobody was thinking about, hey, wait a second. Let's see see what he was doing out there. So that's why now, you, Kirk, never you, heard, you haven't heard any conversation about this other than what we're talking about here today. I, I, see, I think it's deeper than that, Kurt. I believe that they didn't say it because they didn't want to throw Clint Boyer under the bus and draw national attention to what Clint track. I don't think they wanted NASCAR to look at it that way. And I think that the... the uh, the Kenny Wallace and the guys that uh, do the Victory Lane show afterwards, I think they chose not to say anything about it, to be honest with you. Really? I don't think they wanted to draw. You think yeah, I don't think they wanted to. Yeah, they're actually holding back. I don't believe that Kenny Wallace would be. I don't think Kyle Petty would be holding back. Um, I, my gut says they did, to be honest with you. 
Now, I, I, I'm not going to go with you there. I, I just think that they, it was just an afterthought. I, I think Boyer winning the race was just not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of what went on at Richmond last Saturday night. And uh, nobody was looking back on that. I think everybody was thinking so much. Well, listen, well Boyer's going to run out of gas. So, you know, they, they, they didn't after Kurt. he win the race go back and say, hey, wait a second, how did he do that? I Kurt, just don't think they were couple, thinking about it. If some local radio hack in Kansas City can figure it out, I'm sure that Larry Mack and those guys can. Uh, come on now, you're not Sitting some right just, here. you're not some just ordinary local radio hack out here. You know well, Clint yes, Boyer. Yes, I am. Really, driver. you know Clint Boyer. He was your driver at one time. You've driven cars, so you're you're just not some ordinary. Uh, but Larry Mack's been a crew chief. Kenny Wallace has driven cars. They they they've seen this. I'm telling you. I think they just they, overlooked I think, it. I just think they overlooked really? it. That's what I believe. Mm, I can't believe it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about Richmond. I want to talk about Jeff Gordon making it into the chase for the championship. Kyle Bush, his attitude after the race. Um, are you okay with that? Are you okay with Kyle Bush being kind of a jerk afterwards? Only problem I have, and I'll get into it, is how he treated Joe Gibbs a little bit. Well, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about uh, Denny Hamlin. Is he the guy to beat for the chase for the championships? Phone calls. That's what we want next. 913-3810-810. 913-3810-810. You're listening to Track Talk, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Track Talk.